Welcome this evening. This is the final training in a series of five webinars that we've been doing over the summer. So it's kind of an exciting night. We're going to be talking about how to begin marketing your Enagic business online. So this not only applies to everything EWS, but it also applies to everything that you do within your Enagic business to get exposure on the World Wide Web. Tonight's class is called Putting It to Work. So everything that we've taught you up to this point, you've learned, uh, again, this is, we've had four workshops prior to this. So if you go to our, Mike, our Enagic Web System YouTube channel, and you can go there by typing in youtube.com forward slash my Kong and power, one word, my Kong and power. And I'll get uh, Rob, who is joining me tonight from South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. Welcome, Rod. We'll have him go ahead and uh, type that in for you here in just a minute. So at the YouTube channel, you'll find our complete training list. So if you're just hopping in here tonight for the first time, you definitely want to go back and watch segments one through four. So just go to our YouTube channel and look for the playlist um, that's called the EWS training. You'll see the weeks one through four there. And probably by the end of the week, if not by Monday, we'll have week five, this training up there. All right. How we doing, Rob? I haven't been able to get it yet. Okay, still downloading. Worst case, I'll just show the, uh, the slides in the raw format. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Some of the things we've taught you in, in weeks one through four, we taught you the basics uh, of the back office. So uh, on the first one, week one, you're going to learn everything, or you have learned everything about the back office, how to set up all the main features, how to set up your websites, how to begin to, you know, where to go to get your domain name set up, and all these types of things. So we've covered all of that stuff. You should by now pretty much know how to get around in the back office and how to find all these uh, important features. And that's, that's the foundation of what we're going to talk about tonight. You can't begin to market your Enagic business until you actually have the basics in place. So if you haven't seen that yet, watch week one and you'll learn everything you need to know. Uh, it's a beginner's introduction to the back office, okay? Week two, we talked about the... Um, how to develop a proper database. And this is important because in business today, your database is your number one asset. So remember that. If you don't have a database that's organized in one place, you really don't have much. You know, it's uh, to have an organized database in a centralized location is very valuable. Uh, my entire business is built off a database. All of you are in my database, and I'm building a relationship with you continually. And that's what our system provides you with. So in, in week two, you learned about how to build a proper database, how to set up groups, and what groups are, how to target your audience, and also how to update prospect profiles. And it's also a very important part because if you don't know how to build a database and you don't keep good records, when you go back, when you start marketing, which we're going to talk about tonight, and you start driving traffic and getting prospects, you're going to run into some problems because your database is going to grow, it's going to come out of whack, and you're not going to be as effective in your follow-up. In week three, we covered how to master the follow-up. Now, this involved the uh, back office prospect emailer. Uh, so you definitely want to check that out if you missed it. It'll show you, I mean, once you get prospects and you're building your database, the next step is to follow up with them. And the first thing you're going to do is engage them via email and also give them a call. So all of these things fit together like a puzzle. So we taught you all about how to how all that integrates, how to master the follow-up, and how it plugs into the task manager, and how the entire system now, you should have the big picture idea on how the entire system supports what you're about to embark on. So this system will support you all the way. As you drive traffic and you build your prospect database, you're going to see things. If you do it the way we teach, you're going to see things begin to pop. You're going to see, see more sales coming in. You're going to see more success with your follow-up because you're going to be, uh, you're going to have more precision with your follow-up. So again, check out weeks one through four on the YouTube channel, and you'll get a good background on everything that you need to know before you start marketing online. Now I have some notes and I have some slides. So tonight I wanted to give you some, some key points uh, before we begin the slides and give you the, you know, the different uh, aspect, uh, ways that you can generate traffic online. Before I get started on this, I'm going to check in with everybody real quick. 
How's everybody doing? All good, Rob? I'm just doing this because sometimes I talk and I don't know if we're even... Yeah, it's all good. Okay, good deal. So, one of the main things you want to remember is content is king. So in the land of Google, Yahoo, MSN, whatever search engine, we focus on Google because it's the number one search engine in the world. They are definitely the leader. So if you just focus on Google's algorithms and Google's rules and you follow those rules, you'll do well in all search engines for the most part. Content is king. What you want to do is you want to create a network of naturally, dis um, naturally distributed original content. Uh, what that means is it's content that you've written or you've had somebody write for you. It's your own posts. It's your own, uh, your own voice. It's, it's important that you're putting out original quality content on a regular basis. Um, naturally distributed, I said that because another aspect to this is you want to do it in a natural way. You don't want to hop online next week and just start blasting out articles on your blog or on Facebook. You want to do it in a natural way, which means maybe a couple times a week around your schedule. Um, so it's important to know that. You don't want to just start blasting out content and information with no aim or direction. And by the end of this, uh, this presentation, you'll understand exactly what I mean. Another key factor in this is age. Um, not only age your, with your domain name, but age with the content itself. So when you embark on generating free traffic online, which is what we're talking about tonight, um, when you embark on creating organic traffic, you're investing time. Your time, your time and energy is going to be going into this for quite a while. And over time, it's going to compound and build. As the content ages out there and it gets shared over and over again and you uh, have it tweeted or posted or Facebooked or whatever, as that ages, that's when the quality of the content increases. So Google comes and sees that there's this great article written on your blog. You have some keywords in there, which we'll talk about later. You've got everything positioned appropriately. Your blog is uh, correctly set up and it's linking to your EWS website. So it's reading the content. It's seeing the content's been on the internet for six months, and it's seeing that it's been picked up by lots of people, whether through Facebook, YouTube, or shared on other, other ways, like some people retreat or reblog your information. So that's another big part of this whole thing with, with content. Your blog, as I've mentioned, uh, is it's the hub for your content. So with EWS, you've got a, a website that is compliant, and that means you can't edit the content. So that's one thing, that, that's one strike against what we're doing here at EWS because you have no ability to put more content on your site. And being that content is king, this can create a problem. But my brother and I, in the way that we designed the system, we were able to create a way to kind of, um, I wouldn't say trick the search engines, but it's set up in a certain way so that you can actually rank your websites in the search engines. And what we're going to teach you to do is to get a blog and you can get a free blog anywhere online and you know we're going to show you to uh, post on that blog a couple times a, a week and um, we're going to give you some tips on how to do that and you know some of you might be saying out there well I'm not a writer I've never written anything don't you worry about that it's all about natural you'll learn as you go along and you just get on there and you share some information you might grab an article online about something that relates to Kangen water or maybe a eco article or something and you write about it just from your heart. You write about it, and then I'll show you a few techniques on how to t tough some keywords in there, and you put it up online. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is whatever I say tonight, if you get discouraged, don't be discouraged. Just take the next step. Take one step at a time and just do it. Have fun with it. That's, uh, that's a big point. So a blog is an important part of this because this is where you're going to put your content online. Um, this is where you're going to feed content to Google, and your blog is going to rank eventually. And you're going to have a high-ranking blog eventually, and you're going to have a lot of traffic coming into your blog. And the idea is that all your uh, traffic that comes into the blog then gets rerouted into your EWS website. And again, the, the link on your blog and all the links in your articles that are now shared on Facebook and Twitter all over the world down the road, all of which will have your EWS website in it, will help EWS rank better. And the keywords that are within that article will help the whole soup, you know, it's like a big soup of, of uh, you know, I guess, you know, it's called algorithm. So it's just a soup of things that you're going to be doing to make all of this stuff come together. So you definitely want to get a blog at some point. 
Now, with that said, I do know people that have just used Facebook and, um, you know, Brett and Lisa Coker, I talk about them a lot. And so far, I think that's all that they've done is, is Facebook, and they've been able to rank their sites and do very well on the, on the top 10 in Google. So it can be done, and it, all you got to do is start somewhere. But eventually, I do encourage all of you to get a blog so you can master this content king aspect. Uh, you know, I mentioned keywords. The, the key with keywords and what keywords are, are, um, you know, like Kangen water. Kangen water is a keyword. Uh, Kangen is a keyword. Enagic may be a keyword. Alkaline water is a keyword. Ionized water is a keyword. Um, you know, you just kind of want to research a little bit about all these keywords that are, that are involved in our industry and then write about them. Put them in your article in a few different spots. Don't overdo it, but put an article in a few different spots and maybe hotlink a keyword once or twice. Uh, to your EWS websites. These things really help you uh, and your content get ranked. So you want to use your keywords naturally throughout your content and not overdo it because if you do just spam your, your list with Kangen water 50 times, you're going to be um, in violation of the algorithm and Google's going to knock you down. So it's important to know you don't overdo it. It's all about being natural. It's all about being natural in the content you're writing, your approach to social media, uh, your interaction with people, it's all just think natural. Just be yourself, think natural, and be consistent in your efforts every week. So social media is another important aspect. So you want to make sure you're sharing your, your content on social media because that's going to help it get picked up. So you want to tweet about it, um, Facebook about it, maybe put it up on, if it's a business-focused ad, put it up on your LinkedIn, this type of stuff. So always, when you write a, write a post on your blog, share it. Share it on all your channels, uh, social channels and that'll help get it out there and have people pick it up and share it. Not only do you want to write your own content and be original, but you also want to share other people's content. So pick up other people's content that may be in a related uh, industry uh, and share that information with people. So you can write a short blog about somebody else's information and link to their site, and then you can help maybe even network with that person to, to get a return uh, promotion or link on that site as well. So. Um, just like with YouTube, you know, when you're building a YouTube channel, you want to share other people's videos, not just your own. So be thinking along the lines of picking up awesome articles, writing a little blurb about it, and then sharing that information with other people. Um, you don't want to over-promote. That's important to remember. When you're writing and content, don't over-promote a Nagic or Kangen water. The idea is to give valuable information um, you know, quality content, things that inspire people, things that educate them, things that uh, might shock them sometimes or is a really good thing because uh, a lot of people will pick that up and share it and, you know, things that inspire people. So when you share things, don't write a sales letter about Kangen water, you know. Uh, write an article about the earth, maybe, you know, about bottled water crisis, which is a big, big news topic, and you can pull any article off the Internet. Write something about that and then link to a solution. A few lines at the bottom might maybe a little bit of a promotional line at the bottom and then link to your EWS website. If you write just all promotional content and you're blasting people with sales ads and stuff like that, you're not going to get followers, you're not going to get people sharing, and you're not going to get any action on your blog. So keep that in mind. Give value, you receive value. You get what you give in this, in this world, so remember that. So that's the background I have on content is king. Now the other thing that that uh, we've known for many years in the search engine optimization world is linking is queen. Linking, meaning Google's going to take a look at how many websites you're linked on in the world. So that's why social media is important because if somebody picks up an article and you've got your site linked there and you've got your blog uh, linked there and they're sharing all this information and it's picked up, it goes viral, now you've just gotten a bunch of links all over the internet. And what that does in Google's eyes is it gives you credibility. Um, if people are sharing your content and it, you've got links on uh, thousands of websites across the world, you're going to have a much higher uh, rank in the search engines. So all of these come in together and all of these happen naturally as you just take your every day, you get up, maybe spend an hour a day at your computer working on this type of thing, you write a blog, you post it, share it on Facebook, you do a few other things. And over time, this again builds up, it ages, and then Google really starts to like what you're doing. And you just like, the key to it is to keep up on it. Spend an hour a day, five days a week, on this activity. So you want to find ways to get quality links to your websites. Uh, there's many different ways to do that. You can buy links. Um, you can uh, network with other websites, uh, other blogs, maybe share links that way. 
Um, perhaps you know people that have websites. It's a good idea to get links from websites that are within the realm of our industry. Those, those links will be a lot higher rated than any links that you might get from just a random place, like a tire store. I mean, a tire store link isn't going to help you that much. Um, something within the industry would help a lot. Um, .edu's are very, very good. If anybody knows anybody that owns a .edu and you can get a link on their site, definitely go for that. .orgs are really good. Um, and then any, anything in the industry. So, um, you know, maybe there's a health, health industry type thing out there. Maybe there's something within the alkaline uh, food industry that you can get a link from. That would relate very well. So you just want to think of what, uh, think of and look for sites that are in relation to what we're doing. Health related or, you know, alkaline, whatever related. Um, that, that will give you a much better uh, feedback from Google. Um, and again, linking to your EWS websites will give you, um, you know, is a good thing. So you'll, every piece of content or post that you put out, you know, be creative in the way that you do it and post your EWS websites in the content or posts. So, um, you know, you could be just on Facebook for five minutes, see an article in your feed that's talking about the plastic bottles in the Pacific Ocean choking, uh, choking the ocean, and you might just post that on your Facebook and say, end the madness with a link to your website. So always be finding neat little ways to throw your website links out there and definitely find ways to put your links out there when you're either inspiring people or sharing shocking information because people tend to share that stuff. Inspiring people is probably one of the, the number one way to get shares and likes on Facebook. So you can make little images, you can share quote images or quotes from other people and, and share your information that way as well. Um, so always be looking for ways to, to uh, get blend your links into your blog. Um, another way that you can get links is, uh, let's say you know somebody else is doing a blog, you could share, uh, maybe they're in a similar industry and you can share information from their industry or from their business with your newsletter or your um, blog. You can post something and repost what they have and then ask them to do the same. That's another good way to do it, kind of like a joint venture. Um, Yeah, I mean, that, that about sums it up for links. So just be looking for ways to get links, and remember that every time you put your link out there with content and it gets picked up, you're, you're doing well. Um, so that's an important part to, to always keep in the forefront, is looking for links and ways to, to do that. Um, the key to search engine marketing, folks, and then we're going to get into some slides and some details, is natural, consistent activity. Everything that you do, just do it naturally. Set a schedule every week, do it five days a week, or whatever schedule fits you well. The more, the more you give, the more you get. So the more you give into it, the more you get. But I say even if you've got an hour a day, five days a week, and you just donate it to getting online and doing some of the things that we show you and, and working with your prospects and your EWS system, if you just did that consistently for years, uh, you're, you know, within six months, you're going to see things completely change. And then by a year down the road, you're going to see everything just compounding and building, and you're going to have more leads than you know what to do with. And that's happening for a lot of people right now that are already tapping into this information and doing it for themselves. So um, just be natural in what you're doing, be consistent, um, be creative, engage the industry. Uh, just always, you know, tap into some forums or uh, other blogs that talk about alkaline health or um, ionized water or whatever it might be. Just find, find some things out there to the, that relate to the industry and get connected to it. Um, join Facebook groups and, and get connected to what they have and offer because what they'll share will often inspire you to share on your own. So just engage your industry, get involved, and always be looking for new information and ways and new things to share with, with everybody out in the world. Um, again, don't overpromote. That's important. I can't say it enough, and I'll say it again probably five times before the end. Just don't be promotional and salesy because you'll just cut yourself off at the knees. Give value, and you'll get value back. Give quality information. Um, distribute your content in as many ways as possible. So always be looking for new ways to distribute content. There's probably a thousand social networks these days. Don't spread yourself too thin. Focus on the main ones in, uh, initially, but always look for ways to to um, distribute content. You know, to share it with people, to to get it maybe you know into newsletters. Uh, you know, for past businesses that Daryl and I have worked with, we have found ways to to get our content and information into newsletters for other companies. 
So there's just so many different ways that you can do this, and you just want to stay open and uh, attentive to all of the, uh, the avenues that might come your way. The other thing I want to mention that I haven't said enough, I think, um, is the domain name is important. And if you don't have a domain name set up for your EWS website, you need to do that. You need to go to GoDaddy and buy one. If you already have some domain names that are aged, okay, um, that would be a whole lot better. So aged meaning if you bought them a year or two years ago, or if maybe if you buy a domain name from somebody else that's had it for a while, aged domain names are far better than new ones. There's this thing called the Google Sandbox, and we wrote about it recently and posted it up on our blog and Facebook here recently. I don't know if you guys saw that, but um, it's important to know that when you get a new domain and you set up a website, Google's going to stick you in what they call the sandbox uh, for six months at least. And that means you may not see a whole lot of ranking activity. Now that doesn't mean if you don't get ranked for six months because you're in the sandbox and you have a new domain name that your efforts aren't going to be fr fruitful. Um, you'll see immediate results when you start setting all these things up because it's not just about getting ranked. That's a great thing and that's what our focus is. But you're going to have traffic coming from your blog, from social media. You'll, people will come out of the woodwork. You'll have leads coming in from, from all over the place and you won't really know where they came from. And uh, once you get up in the search engines, things just become bigger and uh, you know, you'll see a whole lot more flowing that way. So don't be discouraged if you are in the sandbox and you don't get ranked right away. Keep working on what we teach tonight and you'll find your way uh, to where you want to be. How are we doing? Rob, doing great? We're doing good. Yeah, we're doing good. All right, excellent. Ever, you getting some questions coming in? Yeah, I got some coming in. Uh, mainly about uh, links and blogs. Uh, they're wanting to know how do you uh, keep uh, within an agit compliance with those. Good point. I didn't mention that. I am going to talk about blogs here in a minute, but I'll just go ahead and address that. I might address it again. Now, compliance is very important. Um, so what I'm going to encourage everybody to do is, um, you know, it's it's probably better to create a blog that's more broad than a Kang and Water blog. Um, it, you could create a Kang and Water blog and another blog. I mean, I've seen people do that so that you can f focus more closely on, on Kang and Water and Enagic and keywords. But all the content you share there has to be compliant. You can't be, sh <coughs> excuse me, you can't be sharing health claims, you can't be making uh, testimonials. Um, all of these things can hurt our company. So please, please, don't be stupid. Don't post anything ridiculous online. Don't say anything and healed anything or anything like that. You don't really need to do that. People can feel you, um, you know, and you can have a private conversation with them face to face someday and share some things. But never post any of that stuff online, and don't ever share those uh, that that particular stuff because the FDA is is watching, and um, you know we don't want this wonderful thing that we have here with the magic to to go away. So be sure to. Um, what I'm going to encourage you to do is create a blog that's more health related. Um, the, you know, you could do a health awareness blog and you could post all kinds of topics. So we're really, depends on your focus. See, personally, I would have a health awareness blog and post all kinds of things about alkaline health and health in general and share. There's just so much information in, in, on the internet today about health and how to live healthier. And, and there's so many ways you can tie that into your EWS website and information and Kong and water. That's a great idea, and all the information you share there, as long as you're not, you know, uh, talking about an Agic or Kangen water directly, you're not going to have any compliance issues, and you can share information there. But it's good, it's good to know that you really shouldn't post a whole lot of medical claims or anything on any website at all. And then what I would do then is have a health awareness blog, and then I'd create a uh, business-focused blog um, about the uh, direct sales industry, or you know, um, and then I would feature uh, different news and information, maybe some empowering information you could you could share with people, um, you know, and tie that to your to your Facebook account. You get a lot of shares that way, uh, business related type quotes and stuff, and you can share, uh, you know, business related information on that blog, and then of course share uh, the information that's on your EWH websites about your, your uh, um, you know, the Enagic compensation plan, the Enagic opportunity. So I would have both, I would have both eventually. Um, one thing that you can do is share, you can share any information that is on your sites. Uh, all your sites are 100% compliant and you can share any information that's in your ebooks and all that stuff. So you can pick some information out and expand upon it in your own words and link to your site. That's completely compliant, no problems. 
So please keep compliance in mind. And let's go ahead and get started. I want to get down to the details here. Uh, we're making good time. Sit tight, and uh, at the end of this, we'll do some Q&A. Uh, how are we doing on the PowerPoint? Did it work out? No, it didn't work at all. All right, so folks, I had an issue with the keynote. Um, it's not displaying right with this particular webinar system. Uh, so, you know, nothing's perfect. I kind of like this because we're able to see you on camera, or I'm, you always see me on camera. We're able to connect in a different way. And it's definitely better than go to webinar, but um, there's some things that, you know, some barriers. And this is one of them. So I'm going to show my slides, but unfortunately, there's not going to be any fancy animations. And you're going to see the entire, you know, uh, keynote program instead of, you know, pretty full screen view. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. All right, Rob, how's that look? Looks good. Looks real good. All right, folks. Putting it to work means we're going to take everything we've learned about EWS from, from here until now, and now we're going to put it to work. We're going to drive traffic. We're going to build a database. We're going to... Um, we're going to build, uh, you know, we're going to make more sales. We're going to have leads coming in from everywhere. We're going to rank ourselves in the search engines and really utilize all the features of the EWS system as they were intended. That's why I call this putting it to work. So what I'm going to do is go through some different things that you guys can do. Uh, this video is being recorded, and I will post it on our YouTube channel, and I will get it up on Facebook, and I will send an email to let you guys know when this, when this is available. And you can reference all of this information again later by reviewing the video. Again, blogging is an important part of what we're doing because it's, content is king. I mean, straight up, content is king. Don't forget it. Google is a search engine, and everything it does is crawl content. Content is everything that it's all about. Um, properly formatted content and content uh, quality content is absolutely vital for, um, for Google. So I've got some tips on here, and we'll just kind of touch on these things here. Um, as you can see, you know, people that have blogs are far more, um, they get far more traffic than people without them because they have a hub of content that updates every week, a couple times a week. Google loves fresh content. If you've got a stale site that's just sitting there and it never gets any updates or movement, you're not likely to get ranked. So we're leveraging a blog to be to uh, produce the, the content king aspect of everything that we need to do. Your blog is your hub for your communication to the world and where you'll be sharing all of the uh, in information to entice them to visit your website and continue on with the Kong and Water message. So it's important to plug into a blog. I would suggest using, um, there's two that I would suggest and they're, they're both free and you can get paid upgrade options once you get moving on it. <clears throat> the easiest one is blogger.com. So you might want to write that down. It's a Google product. Blogger.com is produced by Google, so obviously Google's going to favor it. And it's got all the features you need. And if you've used the back office, it's got what we call a WYSIWYG editor. So if you've ever sent an email from EWS and you've made bold and, and you've formatted your email and you've added pictures, it works a similar way. So um, you pick a template, you set it up, um, you, know, you, you can add your own pictures and stuff. It's pretty much point and click and uh, WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So it's got a little box there. You can type in your information, format it the way you want it, and post. There's also ways for people to opt in on your uh, blog, and that's great because now you've got a database building on a blog that is outside of EWS. And the reason that's good is because that's a, um, you know, that's a warm market, so to speak. It's, it's a... Uh, I'd say maybe a lukewarm market. People that opt in for your blog are saying, hey, I like what you're doing here. I like the content you're sharing, and I want to know what, what's going on. And they want to know every time you post, and it'll let them know when you put a new post up. So not only build your EWS database, but also build your blog database because that's where you can pick people, and people will come from. You build a nice big database there, and as you send out articles and stuff, people will begin to go to your sites to see what you're talking about and then opt in. And then once they opt into EWS, the whole sales process begins. The discovery, I like to, not the sales, but the discovery process begins. Um, the key to blogging, as I've said before, is to write about things that people find interesting and entertaining. 
it's important because if it's uh, blasé and it's uh, not interesting at all, uh, people won't share it, they won't read it, they won't come back, and they won't opt in. So find creative ways to inspire your audience with incredible information, and it's really easy to do. It's as simple as Googling. If you can't think of something to write about, just go to Google and type in alkaline health and just see what's there. You know, you'll find an article or a news article or something. Maybe you run into something from, um, um, you know, uh, one of the doctors that promote alkaline health or something, and you might find something you can write about there. And then you just write write something, write an article, uh, throw in a few keywords, and you're off to the races. You just post that up there, and and then people will pick it up, read it, and share it. Um, as you're blogging, it's good to plan ahead too. That's a that's a big thing because, you know, if you don't plan ahead, you plan to fail, so to speak. Uh, you've got to to make sure that you know you've got your schedule, fi you know, figured out. So when you're sitting down and you can't think of anything to write, you don't end up not doing it. Um, I would suggest doing a blog maybe two to three times a week, and it's um, you know do it two to three times a week consistently, uh, and you'll you'll do very well with this. So think ahead, uh, topics, you know, maybe spend an hour blogging one week, uh, I mean, Googling things, coming up with links, um, copy some links on some articles that you find interesting, put them in a, a document on your computer, and then you've got a whole list of things you can write about. Uh, doing that will keep the flow. It'll keep you planning ahead, keep the flow, you won't get stuck, and you won't uh, end up not posting, which is a bad thing. Um, got to keep it flowing. All right, moving along here. Facebook is absolutely something that everyone should be doing, without a doubt, in today's world. What I suggest everybody do is uh, create a business page on Facebook. And uh, if you don't know how to do that, I mean, you can. Uh, there's tutorials on Facebook. It's really easy uh, to do that. Um, or you can just Google it, how to create a business Facebook page. It's just step, step, step. You know, it's not hard. And we also have uh, some pretty banners and stuff that you can put on your, you know, page banners and stuff that you can put on your business page that will brand it to a Nagic and King and Water. So it's good to have a personal page of which you engage your audience personally and maybe share personal information and things with people. And then it's uh, great to have a business page where you can focus on what you're doing and, and with a Nagic and King and Water and share all of that information on that page. And then you can bring people from the personal side gently into your Enagic page. So that's that's the way that I would do it. Um, I, you know, you never want to directly promote your services. Um, you know, what we do, the King & Water directly, like buy a King & Water machine today and just link right into your cart. I mean, that's, that's not going to be effective. You want to create interesting, um, valuable content that people like to read that inspires them or, um, you know, gets them to either share it or, you know, pass it along one way or another. And uh, again, you want to share your blog article on Facebook. Um, always do that. Share on, on Facebook and then uh, tweet it and then wherever else you want to put it. And if it's a business focus, you can share it on LinkedIn. Not only do you want to be posting content, folks, but you also want to engage other people, like other people's pages, um, you know, like other people's posts, chat, comment. All these things build relationship. Okay, this is a relationship business, and Facebook is a great way to create new relationships with people all over the world. It definitely expands your uh, reach overnight. So get engaged with everything you're doing. Get engaged with other people. Join other groups and uh, like other pages that are interesting to you or that maybe even relate to what we're doing here with the Magic. All of that will support you uh, going along. So build those relationships online. Make friends. Share quality content, and they'll keep coming back to your site for more information. I've mentioned Twitter a few times. Uh, it's it's easy to set up. Again, it's something you should definitely do, and you can actually set up your Facebook to post automatically to your Twitter. Um, I'm not a big tweeter myself, but if you're not gonna if you're not gonna get into tweeting, which is 140 characters or less, <laughs> um, which is kind of fun, you know, you can post uh, neat little um, relevant newsworthy type stuff uh, relating to our topic. You know, make it interesting and fun and and try to get people to, to grab that and pick it up and get interest in it. Um, if you aren't going to tweet per se, you can at least set it up and then get your Facebook to post automatically to your Twitter. 
And I think what I'm going to do is a training at some point, if you all want it, I'll do a training on these specific things so we can say, okay, here's how you set up a Facebook page, here's how you set up your Twitter, this is how you link them together. I think it would be good to do that, uh, do a couple trainings just on that alone. Uh, if you like, if you want that, let me know. Um, it's the same thing with, with Facebook. You don't want to spam, you don't want to overpromote. promote um, You want to make it interesting and fun so that other people share it, pick it up, etc. And then here's some, some information on, you know, doing mentions to shout out to somebody so they, they pick up what you're saying and so on. So you can come back to this later. Down the road, I suggest YouTube is a great place to, uh, to build an audience. Um, so you've got, now you've got Facebook, Twitter, you've got a blog, and you've got YouTube. If you're not shy, you can make little videos and post it up on YouTube. Um, a lot of people are doing that right now. If you type in Kangen or Nagic, you'll see a lot of people building a, a, a nice audience on YouTube. You can share not only, um, you know, post videos, maybe uh, if you do a blog, you might make a little video on camera and just talk about, about it and maybe promote your blog or what have you, or uh, maybe do a Kangen demo in your kitchen. I've seen a lot of people do that. That's a great thing to do. There's many things you can do if you're not shy of the camera. Um, but even if you aren't really adept to making videos and you might be a little shy of the camera, you can still build a YouTube channel. You can share other people's content and videos of which you're allowed to share. It does, that's not copyrighted. Um, and you can, that, that stuff can be linked back to your site and you can get links that way as well. So a lot of people have shared videos that are already on YouTube and you can do that. You know, there's a lot of videos about water and the importance of it and uh, a lot of uh, Emoto's work is a great thing to pick up. Uh, Dr. Emoto, if you don't know him, look him up. Um, his work is really interesting and I, I really like it because it, it really ties into, in my mind, it really ties into Kangen water and why we feel so great and why we love it so much. Um, but you can literally share his videos, reshare his stuff, and you know, link it into your sites. Keep it simple. And here's some tips on here that talks about different things. Um, you know, I'm just kind of scanning to see if anything we should cover tonight. It's good to link your URL in the video itself. Now I could take, you know, you might need a little advanced training for that, but in YouTube itself, you can add these um, these links and, uh, you know, little banners that pop up. So YouTube has made it really easy to ed edit your videos right into YouTube. There's another program called Camtasia, which you can create videos with. It's a real uh, easy, fun program, so you might want to look that up, um, where you can import videos and then maybe add, you know, um, you can edit it and add little banners and information in there. You can uh, do all kinds of neat little things with it. So you might want to check that out uh, to make your YouTube videos. It's always good if you're doing a video to add a call to action. So you say, hey, visit my website. So you might show them a, a clip of something or, a, or you might be doing a demo. You always want to do a call to action at the end. Say, visit my website. It's in the comments below. Subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel if you like what you're seeing visit my website and maybe then have your website show up on the video itself. That's always good to do to tie those things together. And when people pick these things up, folks, you get, you get links, um, you know, all the keywords are present. You can um, put keywords into your videos themselves, so you can target these keywords here, like in Magic Kingdom Water, Aqua Water, Ionized Water, you can put all of those on each individual video. And if your video is focused on a particular thing, like a Kangen demo, you can put Kangen demo. So when people are searching for that, they find your videos. So uh, if enough people pick up YouTube and they want training on that, we're really good at it. We can show you uh, how all this works and do a specific training on that. LinkedIn's great because it's a business-focused social media network, okay? So we're, when you're on Facebook, you know, people don't want you to really get on there and just start spamming people's pages about your new business and your, you know, um, how much money you're making and all that stuff. You you know you don't really want to do that uh, per se. You can talk about things in a more general, sharing other information about the direct sales industry and then share your information. But what I like about LinkedIn is it's expected. It's all about business. So you can go there and just talk all about your business. You can talk about, share everything you want to, want to share about your business. So if you're doing a business focused blog, you absolutely should have LinkedIn because this would be an excellent place to share all of that industry specific stuff. Um, and 
you know, there's not a lot of people tied into LinkedIn. Uh, it's growing every day. It's definitely getting more popular now, but um, the competition is much lower than it would be with um, Facebook, Twitter. So it'd be a good thing to get plugged into. Uh, let it pick up your address book, and it will make connections like crazy. It's really, really awesome. Uh, we made some great connections using LinkedIn. I mean, as soon as you get set up, you might even make some connections right away. We've had people reach us just because they found us uh, on LinkedIn. So uh, I like the way it connects people on a business um, front. So uh, some tips here. Make sure your profile, uh, make sure you use keywords and the terms you want to rank for in your, in your profile. And uh, you want to be aggressive in expanding your network. So if it asks you to access your address book or wants you to link. Um, you know, when you log in, it'll have a page that pops up says, do you know this person, that person? Always spend time doing that when you log in. It only takes a couple minutes. You can make 10, 10 to 15 new connections very easily. So be aggressive in doing that. You do that on Facebook as well. Be aggressive making friends, likes, etc., and engaging people um, on all social media channels. So in doing that, you'll get more people to review your business, and that's the name of the game. Um, you can link your blog in there. Um, another great tip here we have is, a, is a, a social media management thing called Hootsuite. You might check that out. Um, this will help you manage all of your different social media channels and link all these things together. So that's another tool outside, but I really don't want to get too much into that because I don't want to confuse you guys. Just go get LinkedIn and, and start the process. So with those three social media channels, you're doing well. You're getting uh, some great reach. You've got some business focus. You've got you know, your Facebook and your Twitter set up. You can share all of that uh, Kong and Water information and link to your sites. Another great way to generate traffic for free online is classified websites. And there's a list of them here on the page. Um, if you go this route, just be very careful and read the terms of service very clearly before you post because they do have rules. And if you break the rules, your post won't go up. But if you do it right and you're creative with it and you get some links on some classified sites, you will drive traffic to your sites, gain links and um, you know backlinks, and it's, it's a great thing to do. So spend some time maybe checking this stuff out, get creative in the way that you post, and follow the, uh, the rules there, and you can get some traffic there as well, traffic, links, et cetera. A drink of water here. We all right, Rob? Yeah, we're doing good. Got a couple questions for later. Excellent. All right. Another way to generate traffic is through article marketing. There are places out there, and here's a couple examples, easy in articles, go articles. This used to be the number one thing to do in SEO many years ago. We've been doing this a long time. Um, I wouldn't say that it's like... Uh, I still think it's valuable, but it's not as great as it used to be. But it's still worth looking at. The, the basic uh, you know, thought here is that you, you write a sh an article, you know, um, a short article about, you know, Kong and water in a way that's uh, just like you would with your blog, but it's much shorter. Um, you know, you, you share some quality information, and then what, what, they, what these sites provide you to do at the bottom with your article is link your site and put your a short bio there. So you'll be able to link your website there or your blog or whatever you're looking at doing. Um, you could literally write an article about a blog post that you've done, you know, and just shorten it, make it more compact, put the, all the great information on that article, and post those as well, linking either to your EWS site or to your blog. Um, doing this will help you improve your search engine rankings because uh, a lot of times people will pick up your articles. What you're doing essentially is sharing content on the internet where anybody can take that content and use it as long as they keep your signature intact at the bottom. Daryl and I actually uh, many years ago wrote an article and we had it picked up in a magazine, believe it or not. Um, and that absolutely helped us tremendously. So you're putting content out there and people are allowed to grab that content and use it on their sites and people actually really do that. So uh, it's a place to gather information. Um, it'd be a great place for you to go and look for ideas on writing, uh, you know, what topics and things to write about. And they have all, as you see here in this image, they have all these different categories here. 
So you can categorize your post and put your signatures in there and your links, and it's going to help you over time as this gets picked up. Maybe people share it, put it on their uh, websites or their blogs themselves, share that content, and it gets syndicated. You're going to have a whole lot more benefit from that. So I say spend some time here. Don't spend all your time here, but this is a great thing. Maybe do an, uh, a couple articles a month. If you do that consistently over time, I really think it'll help you a lot. Um, as far as learning how to write an article, just Google it or go to their sites here, goarticles.com, uh, easy in articles. There'll be some information up on there that'll show you how to give you some tips on how to write a proper article. All right, so again, in the author, bo author box that I told you about, call to action, strong call to action at the bottom. Visit my website to learn more about Kangen water. Uh, visit my website to become alkaline, live healthy and prosperous lives, whatever you want to say. Um, make sure that call to action is there and read the rules and regulations. Another way to get traffic and to get links and to um, help your ranking is through forum posting. Forums are communication uh, boards, so to speak, that are all over the internet uh, for a, a broad range of topics. And there are a community of people that have, um, you know, they have accounts with these, uh, these forums and within there they, they discuss different topics. So there's just there's endless number of forums out there. You could go to Google and type in um, healthy living forum or uh, alkaline forums and you'll probably find some some links to some forums out there. So what I would suggest you do is uh, Google for the niche, find, find, a, find uh, what niche you want to look for, type it in and then uh, put forum after it and then just cruise through some of the links in the top 10 there. When you find one that you like, join it. Join the forum and uh, again you want to read all the rules and regulations like I said before but join it and start engaging the conversation. Um, you know, start posting your ideas and information and start you know, being part of the conversation at that forum. If it's a popular forum you'll do well and if you share good information in the right way people will respect you and they will read your posts and want to check out what you're doing. What's great about forums is you can put, um, although you can't get on there and sell, never go to a forum and write a pro promo for anything. They do give you a profile and in the uh, profile you can put your name, your web address, all of your information that you want to put in there um, and you can probably type a little bit about yourself as well and a lot of times that shows up in the signature underneath your post. So every time you post information, you could be hitting some keywords. You might be talking about alkaline water, and you've got a, you know 100 posts on a popular forum, and you're talking about alkaline water with your links. It's only going to help you. It it's going to tell Google that you are an authority. You're you're involved in the subject. You're seeing your web links everywhere, tied into the information that ties into your industry and your website. I hope this makes sense. Um, Another tip here, you guys can read it, you know, um, you, uh, descriptive link, you can do uh, Kangen Water website, free alkaline health tips. Not all waters are created equal, for example, it's free ebook. Just be creative in what you want, you know, you can take free ebook and then hyperlink it to your website. So here's some tips there for you um, once you get started on that. So again, just be active in doing it and uh, consistent. And, you know, if you do it, maybe. Uh, 30 minutes a week even, and you post a few things a week, you'll be doing well. So we talked about blogging, but now we're going to talk about blog commenting because there's a lot of blog, great blogs out there. Um, blog is a, you know, bloggers are a big uh, industry, and there's endless topics on, on, uh, that they, they write about out there. So one thing that you can do is start commenting on other people's blogs and building relationships with uh, those bloggers. And doing that, you can build a relationship and then maybe even share information, links, and uh, promotions at some point. But the idea is you find a popular blog that relates to what we're, what we're doing and you get involved. Um, you know, just search for, search for um, a blog that relates to maybe alkaline health or healthy living go there, read the information, and see what you, if you like it. See if you like it and then um, comment, you know. Uh, there's always a place to comment. Comment to them back and forth uh, and this will help get you more exposure. So commenting on other people's blogs is a great thing to do.
press releases is another way to generate traffic. Um, there's free ones that you can do, and there's paid ones. So let's say you, you just launched your EWS website, you got your domain name up, you could do a press release on that and get your link out there for that as well. So um, you know, with press releases, you just want to write information pertaining maybe to your Nagic business or the Kangawana products. Um, always make it newsworthy um, and get it out there. You can do it on free sites. If you pay for a press release, uh, back in the old days, uh, free free press releases were very valuable. These days, it might be better to invest uh, a little bit of money. You know, maybe 150 bucks, you can get um, some decent exposure on PR Web. Um, they have many different uh, packages and stuff you can get. But if you can afford just a little bit of money there, it would go a long way in getting your uh, information out about your business, your websites, and the products that you offer. So it's a great way to get links and get your information out there as well. Um, if here's a good, great link here. Um, so if you want to come back to the video, write this down right now. This will tell you how to write a proper press release. Again, we live in the information age, guys. So if there's anything you don't know how to do, Google it. I keep telling you guys that it's, it's so easy to find information so quick. So if you don't know how to write a press release, Google how, how to write a press release. And you will find a guide on how to do that. If you don't know how to write a, a, an article the right way, just Google how to write an article and you'll find the information you need. So it's really easy to find the information and plug into it very quickly and to do these things. This is a slide that we put up here with all kinds of different PR uh, websites. So you can come back to this video and go to these different websites and see if you wanna, if you wanna do it there. Some business ones, you know, uh, so you wanna come back here and check that out. A lot of these are free. I mentioned, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but joint ventures, getting to know other blog owners, getting to know other businesses um, is, a, is a good thing to do because you guys can share information. You could possibly uh, cross promote, you know, promote somebody else's product that might be health related that would help people on your blog and they can do the same thing. So that's a great thing to do. And as you comment on people's other people's blogs, you build a relationship, and you can reach out to people and just email them and say, hey, you know, I've got this article here. I think it would fit really well with what you're doing. And then, you know, offer to reciprocate. So just be creative in this and always be thinking of ways to, uh, to work with other people out there, um, to work with other websites and blogs, and to share information going both ways. Some people have a king and water store, and some people have an office. A lot of people don't. And if you don't mind listing your home on this, then this would be good. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't want to do that because you know I work from home and I wouldn't particularly want to list it. But I wanted to mention it because it's a treasure trove. It's uh, Google Places is a. I mean, if you want a high quality link and profile on your business, Google Places is a great place to post. So go to GooglePlaces.com. Check it out. It's free. Um, you have to have an address. If you work from home, you can list that. If you work from business, you can list that. If you have a store, you can list that, whatever. And what's great is the way that the, the, they show in the Google search results and, of course, Google Maps. People can key in and find you very quickly. If they search for your business name, they'll find you right away. It's just another way to get more exposure and details on what you offer and uh, information about your business. So that's another thing you might want to check out. It's a great thing to do. It's quick and easy to do, easy to set up, and you can gain a lot of benefit from that. Let's see, what's my last slide here? Okay, this is it. <clears throat> then we'll do some Q&A. So what we've been talking about tonight is you know, what we call search engine optimization. We'll do another training about keywords particularly, and we've already done it. Um, if you go to our blog again, or uh, anagicwebsystem.com forward slash blog, and you go to the uh, video training section there, I think it's called BBW or um, uh, weekly training, I think is what it is. I'll show you to it here in a second. But we've already done the training on the keywords. If you go there, you can watch these trainings. Uh, they go into great detail about uh, keywords, long tail keywords, uh, which are basically just taking a keyword and adding words on the end of it so that you can... Uh, rank for that. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to rank in the search engines for alkaline water, it would be hard for you to do that right off the bat because there's a ton of people that are trying to rank for alkaline water. 
So you're going to have to build up your website. You're going to have to get your blog uh, with lots of content and, and have alkaline water keywords in there all over the place. You're going to have some aged content out there. Over time, you'll be able to rank for that keyword. But initially, you could rank for a keyword by adding other words in it, like alkaline water Tulsa. Adding a, a state to the end of your keyword is a great thing because people are searching for this type of stuff and they're looking for local people. So definitely want to get some keywords worked in um, with your state and your location. If you live in a city, use the city name. Uh, it works really well. So as you're using the keywords, uh, you want to work in your long tail keywords into your blog content. So you might say, you know, at the end of your, your blog, to get the best alkaline water in the world in Tulsa or in North Carolina or wherever you're at, you can put that at the bottom and uh, Google would pick that up. So always be thinking about different long tail keywords that you can use. Check out the training on our blog and we expand on that and also give you tools. Uh, there's tools out there where you can type in alkaline water and then it'll give you ideas on how to expand upon that. Uh, so that you can rank for those keywords uh, more easily. All right, so that is all I have for you guys tonight. Uh, hopefully I didn't overwhelm you with all the information, but I just wanted to go through all the different ways that you could generate traffic. What I'm going to encourage you guys to do is take it one day at a time. If you don't have Facebook, start there. Um, there's people having lots of success without doing, a, a, you know, maybe doing one of these things and having great success that are ranked on the search engines, get plenty of leads. Um, you know, if you, if you want to look somebody up, look up Brett and Elisa Coker, check out their Facebook page and talk to them. They'll tell you what they're doing. Um, when you start tying in this other stuff, you know, what I personally would do is start with Facebook, uh, set up the Twitter, get these connected, and then uh, definitely get LinkedIn up and running next. And then I would start, I'd set up a blog. And then I would start doing that. And I would just do that for a while. I wouldn't do anything else. You don't need to get into all this other stuff yet. Once you get the flow down and once you get things moving, you're going to see traffic coming in, leads are going to come in, you're going to start to see your website get ranked, you're going to see things happen. Um, then you can start to pick up this other stuff once you've got this down. So you might decide, hey, you know, I'm going to write an article today. Sit down, write an article, put it up on these two websites. There's tons of them out there. You can pick whatever site you want, get it up there, and it's done. Just take you an hour, maybe, to write an article, post it, and have it done. So you could spend an hour a week doing something like this. When you're engaging your business, when you're engaging your industry, you're going to run into forums that you can post on. It's going to come naturally. You're going to run into Facebook groups that you can uh, join and share information on and link back to your sites. Um, you're going to run into a lot of things. You run into other businesses, blogs, people that you can work with, links that you can get on other people's sites. So it all happens naturally when you take it one day at a time and step by step. Let's do some questions, Rob. Sorry, I had to unmute my uh, thing there. No problem, bro. Uh, I did have a question. Uh, uh, Harvey said share, uh, he wanted to say how sharing bo sharing bottled water is expensive and other reasons not to spend the money that way. <clears throat> sharing bottled water is expensive. Yeah, he wants to, he wants us to talk about how sharing bottled water is expensive and other reasons not to spend the money. So basically, he's wanting to know. Uh, why Congo water and not just bottled water is the way I'm taking that. Harvey, can you expand on that? Yeah, I don't quite understand that. You got another question? Uh, Veronica, she's uh, we've been having a lot of questions lately about a Nagix blog. And Veronica Healy wrote in that she had a Nagix blog for a while but discontinued it. She's wanting to know what happened to the trail. I just w wanted to point out we weren't associated with that. Uh, if you want to explain on that. Um, oh, I guess that's the success blog. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Um, we're not affiliated with that. A lot of people think we are. Uh, we're not affiliated with, with that automated blog system. And... Um, you know, so that's not us. We can't we can't really answer what's going on there uh, for you. 
Thanks for pointing that out. We do have quite a few questions on that here lately. Yeah, uh, I've seen a lot of chat stuff. Personally, guys, I would do your own blog because it's your own content, it's your own voice, it's your own word. You know, to have an automated blog, maybe as a side thing if you don't have time, maybe. But you know, get your own blog, start your own conversation, make your own friends, get your own uh, content out there. That's important. It's a big part of what you're going to be doing. Yeah, now, uh, Jim Jim Britt points out that uh, he said you should be careful who you friend on Facebook for you do not want people who post junk and obscene material to your timeline. Uh, I'm wondering if Jim is using a personal Facebook page or if he's actually set up a, uh, a business page. Well, he makes a good point. You know, you want to be careful about what you put out there on your Facebook pages. Um, you know, you could also create a separate Facebook account. If you've got a personal Facebook page and you only invite certain people or, or be friends with certain people that can see your feed like your family, don't use that one to create your business page. Um, create a whole new account with your name and uh, you know you can have a personal side which is a you know your personal voice but still maybe has a business type focus to it and then you can create a business page and then just create a whole new audience there. So I, if you're concerned about your personal information I wouldn't you know, or if you are very protective about uh, what you share with people on your personal Facebook page, I would just create a whole new account and add your business page there and use that for business. Okay, Elizabeth is wanting to share that uh, she just started on Facebook business and Google business and she's wanting to say that the pages are free. Uh, so she's having a lot of success for that. Um, Jim Britt is wanting to point out that uh, his business page it has limits on who can post to it, so he's he's doing good on that as well. Uh, that's I don't really have any other questions at this at this time. Really, we covered all this big topic, and I threw a lot of stuff out there. No questions. <laughs> no. All right. Well, let me show you guys a, a couple more things here, so you know where everything's at. Um, now, Carol Ann Fisher, she did ask if you would put up the Twitter slide once more. Yes, I will. Um, I'll do that in here in one second. So you can see here actually in your back office there's a banner here um, that links right to that training. So if, you're, if you've missed any of the other trainings you can come right here in your back office and just click through these banners and go right to the playlist, the training playlist. So. Um, another way to do that, and I'll show you real quick, again, is go to YouTube.com. Forward slash My Cognitive Power. And if you're like most of the training is right here. Okay. Week five, we'll have a uh, five week training. We'll have week five up here shortly. But I, I suggest you guys go through this again and again. Um, as you move along and you start generating traffic, um, you're going to want to refresh yourself. Because I think it's really important when you start building your database and you start getting leads into your back office that you know what to do with them. So uh, week two, make sure you do that and learn all about your prospect manager so that you've got impeccable records back here. And when you go to follow up with somebody and talk to them for the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth time, because again, it, takes, it can take up to ten times before you make a sale. Um, so you want to be impeccable with your follow-up. This system helps you do that. And then make sure you understand the prospect ma uh, emailer very well before you really start driving traffic to your sites. So you know how to follow up and how all these things tie together. Um, the blog, I wanted to show you the other training so that you guys can learn about the mark, uh, the, I'll just use this one here. magicwebsystem.com forward slash blog has loads of videos that go through all the features of the back office but if you go to this training webinar section here and you go through these BBWs these will really go into depth on what we're talking about especially this one part four unlock success with keyword optimization learn about keywords by clicking here and watching this recording this webinar it'll give you all the tools and information that you need to know to, uh, to know what to do with that. But it's really not hard. If you just think about all the different keywords, write them down, alkaline water, ionized water, Kangen water, and Nagic, 
you know, um, start thinking, making a list of those keywords, and then start writing about them. Uh, you'll 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 be doing just fine. All right. So let me show that slide for her. And there's nothing else, huh? Uh, nope. No, I've pretty much uh, took care of a few of the minor questions that weren't really. All right, there's the Twitter slide. And I'll just go ahead and wrap up tonight, guys. Um, if you have any questions, just email mastermind at anagicwebsystem.com. I'm more than happy to help you guys along the way. <clears throat> Pick the website you want to work with if, you, if you're just getting started. The E4 is a great site. The E6 is a great site. Um, pick the site you want to work with and then get it up with a domain name and then start, you know, take the, take the training if you haven't taken it yet, understand the back office and start taking action. Start, sh start your Facebook page, start sharing your links, start sharing information and take it step by step. And you guys will end up right where you want to be. Now, I'm going to end this series uh, for the summer. We're going to start it again in the fall, and I, I'm still thinking about what I want to do. I mean, we've already done the training uh, one through five. We've covered a lot of the information. We're, this marketing training has been done before. Um, on the blog, actually, and I'm going to go back to that again because it's uh, if you want in-depth training. I didn't go too, too far in-depth uh, this time, but let me... Uh, Back to the blog here. Where is it? All right. Under this UWS training webinars, uh, if you go to generate endless traffic, prospects, and sales, it's a multiple segment training where everything I covered tonight I went into great detail. So if I just kind of touched on everything, give you guys an overview, but you'll see here segment one, segment two, segment three. It would really be good for you to come here and watch this if you're really serious about driving traffic online because it's got a lot of details in there for you as well. All right, so if you need any directions, just reach out, give us a contact. We appreciate you guys' time and being here this evening. And we wish you the greatest success with your business. And we love you guys. We appreciate you. Um, I am going to be in Seattle uh, July 19th. I'll be there. I'll be doing an hour training on stage, and I will also be available for personalized training sessions. <clears throat> So if you want some hands-on uh, help from me, come out to Seattle, July 19th. It's up on our Facebook page, and we'll be sending an email out for that event tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now.